Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today we have another episode of Flat Earthers Say the Darndest Things. Today we're going to have a look at somebody that's been in the news quite a bit lately, and that is Flat Earth Dave. Now, he recently put out a video concerning the recent lunar eclipse on the evening of March 13th to 14th. Now, I was up for that eclipse and videoed the whole thing, and I have the full-length video on my astronomy channel, Shamrock Banks Observatory, and I have a 12-minute time-lapse on my Bob the Science Guy channel. Well, Dave put out a two-minute video on his channel claiming this lunar eclipse disproved the globe Earth. Let's have a look at his claims and then see how he did it. Now, Dave's point is that the shadow of the Earth, which is that curved shadow you very clearly see in both these images, moved in one direction during the start of the eclipse on the left, and it moved in another direction at the end of the eclipse on the right. Now, I could chalk this up to Dave just not understanding how eclipses work, but I think that there's a little bit more to that because he manipulated these images a little bit. First, let's go ahead and have a look how this particular eclipse occurred. Now, the orbit of the moon is very well established, as is the position of the shadow of the Earth. The larger circle is the penumbra of the shadow, and the inner circle is the umbra of the shadow, and the moon, obviously, is right up there. Now, first, let's go ahead and have a look at the movement of the moon through the Earth's shadow. Specifically, how does it move through the shadow compared to the center of the shadow? So, let me get out of here, and we'll go ahead and hit play. Now let's take a quick pause here and just have a look. Uh, this is the Sea of Crisis in the moon, this round object right here, and you can see it in the second image here. If you draw a line connecting the two, you see the approximate path of the moon. And as you can see, the path of the moon goes in this direction. Now the circle of the umbra of the Earth's shadow is denoted by this inner circle here. And you see on the moon, this nice curved shadow. Let's go ahead and play it a little longer. Notice the direction that the shadow is overcoming the moon. Now, right here, once again, we can line up the Sea of Crisis. And as we can see, the shadow of the Earth is at a slight angle to the line formed by connecting the Sea of Crisis in these different images. Let's play a little bit more. Notice that the moon is not passing through the center of the shadow of the Earth. Now, once again, let's line up the Sea of Crisis comes right down here, and now it'll be here. And now, as you can see, the sunlight is starting to cross the moon in this direction. Remember, up here, it was coming in that angle. And here, because of where it's coming out of the shadow, it's going across the moon in that angle. Now, once again, let's line up the Sea of Crisis. Notice that it just goes from one to the next to the next, and it's at the same position at approximately two o'clock. The North Pole of the Moon is at the top. The South Pole is at the bottom. The Sea of Crisis is at the northeast limb of the Moon. You'll also notice a small crater down here. That is called the Crater Gemaldi, and that is another nice landmark that we can line up to get the path of the moon. So right off the bat, we've settled the mystery. Because of the way the moon is moving through the shadow of the earth, the shadow forms a different angle on the surface of the moon. That angle, if you would draw a line perpendicular to it, will be in that direction. And if you draw it over here, there's the perpendicular line, and it's going in that direction. That right there solves the mystery for Dave. And if he had just made a simple mistake, that would be the end of it. However, Dave manipulated the images a little bit to make this effect more. 
Let's go ahead and see if we can catch him. Now this video is only two minutes long and the second half of it is mostly a shameless advertisement for Dave's leaky uh, Flat Earth Moon and Sun app. You know, the one that leaked the names, addresses, and emails of all the people that used it. See MC Tune for more details. But I'm going to go ahead and show this without comment to see whether or not you pick up what I picked up on. Did you see what he did? Pretty sneaky. Uh, he did a couple of things here. First of all, the moon is very much overexposed with a lot of glare. This is designed to reduce the amount of surface detail that you can see because now you just have a shiny disk with a shadow coming across it. You actually have to know the geography of the moon in order to be able to tell what he did. But let's look at it a little closer. Now let's start off by identifying some lunar geography. Right here is the crater Gemaldi. And you can very clearly see if you were to look at the moon as a clock face, it would be down at about eight o'clock. Now, if we go a little bit forward, we can very clearly identify the Sea of Crisis right here. So basically, if you were to draw a line from the crater Gemaldi straight through the moon up to the Sea of Crisis, it would go from about 8 o'clock to probably, oh, around 2.15 or so. Now, notice that this is 3 o'clock down here. In this image, the north pole of the moon is oriented pretty much right up above my head at the top of the moon. Now let's go see what happens when the shadow passes over the moon and it starts to emerge into the sunlight on the other side. What do we have right here? That's the crater Gemaldi. That was all the way down here on the first image. How about the Sea of Crisis? It was right here. Why don't we see that anymore? It's because it's been rotated all the way down to here. We'll go a little bit further and we'll see it a little bit better. Look where the Sea of Crisis is now. Remember, it used to be up here. And again, you can very clearly see the Sea of Crisis here, and it's all the way over here at 3 o'clock. Now, as an astronomer, let me tell you how Dave took this picture, whoever he had take it for him. It was on a German equatorial mount, which meant that as the moon moved through the sky, the mount rotated the camera to keep the north pole of the moon at the top of the image. That's the way a German equatorial mount works. Now, an alt as mount just basically follows the moon, and as a result, the object that you're looking at appears to rotate in the eyepiece. The German equatorial mount compensates for that rotation automatically by design. We can very clearly see that the moon is not passing directly through the center of the Earth's shadow. It's actually a little bit here to the north. 
It's kind of going from northeast out to west. As a result, as the moon enters the shadow of the earth, here is the orientation of that shadow. And again, going from crisis to crisis, you can see that that's at just a slight angle. It's not quite perpendicular, but it's really not too far off. And then as the moon moves through the shadow of the earth, the top part of the shadow, it will emerge back into the sunlight and the shadow at the exit is rotated compared to the shadow at the entrance. And that is simply because of where the moon went through the shadow of the earth. And again, remember, here is the crater Gemaldi. Here is the Sea of Crisis. Looking at Dave's image of the eclipse, here is Gemaldi. And here is the Sea of Crisis. So if you were to draw a line between the two, it would come out here at about two o'clock. Maybe a little bit, maybe 2.15. However, let's look at the other end of the eclipse. Oh, 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 what do we see here? What's that? Is that up here anymore? No, it's been rotated down 30 or 40 degrees. You can see the sea of moisture right here. And you can see the sea of moisture here. If you draw a line between the sea of moisture and the center of the moon, you end up here. On this one, if you draw a line from the sea of moisture through the center of the moon, you end up here. So you see here, the moon has been rotated and not by a small amount. Just to recap, the shadow of the earth is clearly round. Shadow has a curved surface to it. Second, the position of the shadow is exactly where NASA predicted the shadow would be based on the movement of the moon through the shadow of the earth. And they did that in advance and reality matched it. But more importantly, third, Dave falsified his data. Despite the fact he overexposed the moon and made landmarks very difficult to spot, we were able to find both the crater Gemaldi and the Sea of Crisis. And using those two points on the surface of the moon and drawing the line between them, we demonstrated that the image was rotated 30 to 45 degrees clockwise. Now, why would that happen? Uh, it could have been the mount, except the mount was not rotating the moon. It's a German equatorial mount. And as a result, the moon was properly oriented throughout the entire video. However, either the camera was rotated or Dave literally rotated the image to make this discrepancy in shadow direction uh, appear more extreme. So the bottom line is this, Dave, you may be able to fool some of the flat earthers out there that don't understand astronomy or astrophotography. When you run into people like me that actually know about these things, your deception is obvious. And because you used one of the wonders of nature, the lunar eclipse, as a advertisement for your leaky ass sun moon app, I'm going to call you out on it. And what's more, you're not any better of an astronomer than you are a cybersecurity specialist on your leaky ass iPhone app. So this is Bob the Science Guy calling out frauds one at a time. Make sure you drop me a like and subscribe. And if you would like, have a look at the telescope uh, project that we're doing right now to get a C14 for the observatory. You can read more about that in the description. The links are all right there and your support would be appreciated. Take care, everyone.